Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel spoke to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. Hallelujah. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues for all generations. Even on this day of rejoicing, we acknowledge our sins and transgressions, our trespasses against the commands of our God. So let us confess them humbly and honestly. Lord God, 
our Heavenly Father, we must confess with King David, I have sinned against you and you only, O God, and done what is evil in your sight. We recognize our faults, and we lament with Peter over our weaknesses and sins. We admit our true position before you, and say with Paul, I am the worst of sinners. O God, hear our confession. Have mercy and forgive us for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, who paid for our sins on Calvary. Renew us with his victorious power and give us your Holy Spirit that we may serve you in joy and confidence and finally share in the triumph of eternal life with all your saints. Hear our Lord's promise. I forgive your sins and remember your trespasses no more. In the name and stead of Christ, our risen and victorious Savior, I announce that forgiveness is yours. Live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Be joyful and courageous. Amen. We joyfully believe these words of hope and life. We respond with Thomas, my Lord and my God. We are renewed in mind and spirit. Jesus is our risen Lord. Hallelujah. pray together. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with heartfelt joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament lesson for the Feast of the Resurrection is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 65, beginning at verse 17. Behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them, they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build a, another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For the days of a tree shall be like the days of my people, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their minds or their hands. They shall not labor in vain or their or bear children for calamity. For they shall be in the offspring of the blessed of the Lord, and their descendants with them. Before they call, I shall answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. And dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The epistle for this day is written in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 19. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to the God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Easter Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 1. On the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Here ends our Easter Gospel. Let us now confess our Christian faith together as we say the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
please rise. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message this morning is our epistle lesson, 1 Corinthians 15, 19 to 26. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, if you've seen one, you've probably seen tons of them. Infomercials, paid advertisements trying to sell you this thing or that thing, those new things over there that are bigger and better and faster and cheaper and easier than the other stuff we sold you last year. Who's to say if they're right, really? Maybe it really is bigger and better and faster and more equipped to make your life a step above where it is right now. Maybe this new thing really is the best invention since sliced bread. The problem is, of course, usually it's not. They're just trying to sell you something. But you don't know that until that it's not better than the last one you bought and didn't need until you have already bought the new one. And then, psst, it's too late to send it back. If something really doesn't work, and if in the end has no factual basis to its claim, it's just junk. As a wise man once said, let the buyer beware. Well, the same goes for the church. Did you know that? If this guy named Jesus of Nazareth didn't actually die on a Roman cross 2,000 years ago and come back to life three days later, we might as well pack it all up and go home. Everything the church believes and teaches means absolutely nothing unless it has a basis in a historical event. Justification by grace through faith, the declaration that God has paid the price to repair the gap between us and him, all of it depends completely on the fact of that Jesus' tomb was empty on that first Easter morning. That brings me then to the theme of our message this morning, which is this. Christ is risen. So what? So what? Our Christian faith depends entirely on the fact of the empty tomb. So let me start off right away by stating clearly and emphatically, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is indeed a fact. If Christ did not rise from the dead, you are still in your sins. Historians are certain of one thing. Whether they believe Jesus rose or not, it is considered a historic fact that Jesus of Nazareth did die by crucifixion on a Roman cross. This is attested to by Roman historians who had no connection to the Christian faith. But what, what if the, Jesus didn't actually rise from the dead? Let's suppose for a moment that he did not, that he died and maybe his disciples stole his body, as the Jews claimed. I want you to really consider that possibility and turn it over a few times in your mind. Because I can guarantee you that there are many in the world who hold that opinion. And it seems that their number is growing each day. Okay, but, but also consider this. If Christ did not rise from the dead, then you and I are in a lot of trouble. Because we are all sinners. And we all deserve to die. That means physically and eternally. 
We need Christ's death to pay for our sins, and his death doesn't mean anything unless he defeated death by rising to life again. If Christ did not rise from the dead, though, it's even worse than that. Not only do we have no forgiveness of sins and no promise of new life, but neither do our loved ones who have already died. No resurrection means they are dead and gone forever. We will never see them again. If Christ did not rise from the dead, then as St. Paul puts it, we are of all people most to be pitied. This is how miserable a prospect it would be. We would have no real hope for the present, certainly none for the future. What we would have only is this life. This life is the basis for our hope and assurance. This life, a life full of death. Pain, suffering, cancer, unemployment, crime, violence, war, divorce, Alzheimer's. What that means is that we have staked our lives on a fantasy. And not a Harry Potter kind of fantasy with a happy ending either. One with a miserable ending. How pitiful is that? But in fact... Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Dear friends in Christ, our Jesus has been raised from the dead. That too is a fact. Yes, there are many theories about what really happened in that tomb. Maybe you saw a show like I did on the History Channel a few years ago where they proposed the, the wrong tomb theory. That was... That was interesting. That seemed a little bit more different than usual. Different than, say, the theory where Jesus only appeared to die. Or the theory where women, the women were hallucinating. Or my personal favorite, the lettuce theory, where the gardener was so upset at his lettuce crop being trampled by curious onlookers that he moved the body of Jesus. All of these theories. And they all fall short because they all raise more questions than they answer. For instance, not one of these theories accounts for why the Roman soldiers guarding the tomb went along with the alleged plot. If the body was not in the end discovered, these guards probably were executed. All they had to do was come up with the body of Jesus. But they couldn't do it. In fact, none of these theories ever produced the body of Jesus. How could they? Jesus was alive. The disciples were so convinced of the fact of the resurrection that they staked their lives on proclaiming it. Only one of them, John, according to tradition, is known to have lived to an old age. And he managed that only because he was exiled. The rest died bloody, premature, martyrs, deaths because of the faith in which Christ's resurrection was the central truth. I mean, think about it. Andrew was crucified. Peter, Philip, and Bartholomew were crucified upside down. James was beheaded. You get the idea. They would never have done this if they were making it up. Die for a lie? If they knew where Jesus' body was, someone would have spoken up. So Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This is established by the scriptures and by clear historical testimony. Not that I thought anyone here this morning doubted that, but it does lead to an important question for our consideration. So what? Yes, Jesus rose from the dead on that first Easter morning. But so what? What is the importance or relevance of this historic event? Let me put it this way. And I'm not overstating it. From this event flows all the blessings of our faith. It means, first of all, that we have life. Paul states, for as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. The fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead means you and I and all believers in Christ will also rise from the dead. It means that death is not forever. 
and that death is forever dead. It means that if death couldn't hold on to Christ, it cannot hold on to anyone who belongs to Christ. And that includes you and me. For us who are baptized into Christ, it means that death, the death that we all face, is not the important one. The physical death that we all will endure, that is, of course, unless Christ returns first, this death is not the one that really matters. It is merely physical death. It's not spiritual, not eternal. The death that actually matters is already in our past. You see, the real death, being dead to sin, that one, the one that counted because it lasts forever, we already died that death in our baptism through which we were joined to Christ in his death and resurrection. Jesus died our death for us that day on the cross. His death and resurrection are given to us now in baptism, where God's triune name is placed upon us. On that day, we became God's children. More than that, God's heirs of eternal salvation. See, that's what Christ's resurrection means for us. We have life here and now. And we know that we shall keep this life hereafter for all eternity in heaven. That's important. The other important so what about our Lord's resurrection, it means that the last enemy will be destroyed. Paul writes, For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. What an awful and terrible enemy death is. It takes away from us those we love. It fills us with fear and anxiety. It seems to be the constant reminder that no matter how good things are in this world, they can all be over in a heartbeat. In the face of death, we feel powerless, filled with sorrow and grief. But death's days are numbered, my friends. On the last day, you and I and all believers in Christ will be gathered joyfully around God's throne after our very flesh is given new life, just as the flesh of Jesus received new life, we shall rise with new bodies and will gather around Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God. Victorious over sin, death, and the power of the devil, you and I will reign with Christ forever. Death will no longer be the menace to us who are in Christ. That wicked weapon of the devil will be completely removed once and for all. Death's sting will no longer have any power or sway over us whatsoever, for Christ has destroyed death with his own death. Even though, for the time being, we sin and repent, we rise and we fall, we are born and we die, we look forward with all hope and confidence to the resurrection of the dead. Just as Christ rose from death in the same way, we too will be brought to new life. And there is nothing that the devil or his minions of death-wielding demons can do about it. The battle has been won. Dear friends, what happened in Jesus' tomb that first Easter morning so long ago is real despite how unbelievable it may seem. It is an event which took place in the real world, witnessed by hundreds. Just as Christ Jesus himself rose to new life after being put to death on that Roman cross, God will not abandon us to the grave after our own flesh loses its life. We can be glad, secure in the reality of the empty tomb, we can rejoice with our whole being in the certainty of our resurrection because we do not stand on myths or legends or fables. We confess a doctrine based on a historic reality. And therefore we can shout, He is risen. I believe in the resurrection of the flesh. And that makes all the difference in this world and in the world to come. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, 
May you keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, our worship continues with the gathering of our offerings. You may be seated. Let us rise for prayer. We continue with the response of prayer for Easter as printed in your service folder. O God of life and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to your abundant grace, you have brought us again to a new and living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You have transformed the night of doubt and sorrow into the new and eternal day of joy and gladness. You have delivered your Son, who died for our sins from the grip of death and raised him by your power. Through him you removed death's sting for us. Fill our hearts with the joy of the empty tomb. Help us to show forth your praises. Visit with your gracious presence those with special needs this day. Lord of the church, we call upon you in every time of need and know that you will hear and answer our prayers. This morning we lift up in prayer the members of our congregation and their needs. We rejoice with those who are celebrating anniversaries, birthdays, and new arrivals. We pray that you would add to their joy and bless them during these times of celebration. We also share the burden of those who are sick and suffering. We pray that you would grant them strength and healing according to your good and gracious will. We pray for those who are fearful and lonely, those who are mourning and grieving. We ask that you would visit them with your reassuring and comforting presence. Bless our congregation, O Lord. Meet our needs by your grace. Father, as we prepare to partake of your holy supper, make us obedient to your commands so that we might worthily receive Christ's body and blood. Give us humility to examine ourselves honestly. Give us certainty that Christ is truly present 
when we receive this treasure for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Let the radiant beams of Easter's light shine in the depths of our souls. Bring peace to our hearts and strengthen our faith. We pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. At this time, we continue with the distribution of the Lord's Supper. The numbers of the communion hymns are listed in the bulletin. You will have to use your hymnal uh, to look those up.
We rise. O oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of his resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ our Lord. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ is risen. Alleluia. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. I invite you to shake the hand of someone near you and wish them a happy Easter as well. Well, again, we want to welcome all of you on this holiday. Uh, if you are a guest or a visitor, a special welcome to you. We are glad you're here and invite you certainly to come back and worship with us again. Just a couple of things I want to draw your attention to. Uh, again, uh, next month, which starts tomorrow, April, we will be having our pictures taken for our pictorial directory, and we would like everyone to be involved. So if you have not been here to sign up, or if you have not heard about it, please take time at the back table. Sign up for a time to come in and get your pictures taken. You'll get a free picture and a free directory if you do so. Uh, and we would encourage as many of our members to be there as possible. Also, this week is a very quiet week. After all the festivities, there is a, the office is closed tomorrow. School is out for the week. But on Thursday is a special kind of event. We've been talking about additional staffing that our church might need going forward. And one of the things we've talked about is maybe somebody in terms of family life director, someone who could work with our youth, someone who could work with Sunday school, vacation Bible school. And uh, the director of the family life program at Ann Arbor is coming on Thursday night at 7 o'clock over in the cafeteria. Uh, this is for all the boards and officers of the church to be there, but we would invite anyone who maybe would like to come ask a question, wonders what this is all about. So uh, I would encourage you, I would invite you, when, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, over in the cafeteria, uh, if you'd like to be a part of that. Otherwise, look over the bulletin and the calendar, and may the Lord fill you with the joy of the resurrection, the resurrection fact, which makes all the difference for our faith. 